You're listening to The Mike Holder Show. Do you mean that rhetorically, or is this just more idle flirtation? I radio Mike Holder on Spreaker.com. Shady Sky on the Mike Holder Show, song called Sweet, Sweet Melody. Yes, welcome back. It's the Mike Holder Show. Sorry about that little technical difficulty as the server kind of went bleep, goodbye. But we picked it right up where we left off. I guess the server didn't like the sounds of fruitcake. To tell you the truth, I didn't either, but oh well. We're back. Part D, we've learned how to adjust. We were prepared this time. Last week we had a one show where we just could not get the whole show off. The server kept crashing, so we said, Oh, well, we're going to take the week off. Because I don't want to put my fist through a wall and make a hole, you know? Because I'm a man of peace. Really, I am. Besides, I couldn't punch a wall. I'd hurt my hand, man. <laughs> All righty. Enough of that. Let's get back to it. All right. Yeah. So we were talking about a poll. 45% of people really don't want the holidays to happen. These are the people who are in the worst economic straits, and who can blame them? But then there's this, you know, uh, craziness going on with Thanksgiving. We'll get into it in a minute. But I got a couple other things, all right? The State Department has announced that it's sending the Assistant Secretary of State for International Organization Affairs to 
Minneapolis. Basically, Esther Brimmer, who is being assigned, will meet with local human rights and refugee advocates. Title is Assistant Secretary of State for International Organization Affairs. <laughs> She's traveling there on the 19th to be hosted by Congressman Keith Ellison, Democrat of Minnesota, and participate in a series and discussions with civil society organizations on U.S. multilateral engagement. What? Basically, this press release I'm seeing written pretty much the same way an announcement for a trip abroad would be described, except Brimmer's going to the Twin Cities. <laughs> While she's there, she's going to meet with Eric Schwartz, dean of the Humphrey School, named after, of course, Hubert H. Humphrey, former vice president of the United States under Lyndon Baines Johnson, and failed to run. Well, he ran, but failed to get elected in the 1968 presidential election against Richard M. Nixon. Basically, Humphrey kind of took it on because LBJ stepped down and said, I ain't going to take another term. I will not run again for president. Thank God! As he was bombing the heck out of Vietnam. Uselessly. Don't get me into that. Vietnam was a mistake anyway. So yeah, all right, we're gonna send a we're gonna send an envoy now to Minneapolis because you know we we need to have diplomatic relations with Minnesota now. I guess after Jeff see the body then sure we need that. <laughs> um, what's going on in San Antonio? A student is expelled for refusing location tracking radio frequency ID badge. Basic, uh, basically, what this school system down there in San Antonio, it's John Jay High School in San Antonio. I got a couple of San Antonio friends. David, you know anything about this? Patty? Uh, anyway, effective November 26th, um, a student is being withdrawn from that high school, John Jay High School. According to a letter sent out by the district that has now been made public, Letter was sent November 13th, informing the student's father that the Smart ID program, which was phased in with the new school year, is now in full implementation and requires all students to comply. Andrea Hernandez is the girl's name. She refused to wear the badge, so she's being withdrawn. She says it violates her religious freedom. Basically, she's a Christian and believes that that is basically mark of the beast kind of thing. And you can't blame them. I mean, come on. Basically, this ID badge includes the photo and name of each student, a barcode tied to the student's social security number, as well as one of these RFID chips, which pinpoints the exact location of the individual student, including after hours when the student is no longer in school and leaves campus. Apparently, the battle over the IDs has been an ongoing saga. The Hernandez family previously attended several school board meetings, organized protests, filed former grievances with the district over the matter. It's been backed by numerous civil rights advocates, claiming it is an invasion of privacy. There's been public outcry, pressure from rights groups. Even though that's happened, the school has offered to remove the battery and chip but would not budge on maintaining the ID. They're also they're also offering the Hernandez family, we'll let your daughter back in, we'll take the battery out, we'll take the chip out, but what you have to do is end your criticism of this and agree to comply and even tout the policy. Andrea... Uh, instead agreed to carry the original ID card which she was issued when she began in high school and was told it would be valid for her entire four years there. Alrighty. How wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There you go. Bing. I knew that was coming to an end. I, it, it was like timed in my head. I know this bed all too well. After hearing it Five days a week for two years straight. <laughs> but it's a cool bed, you know. 
ding. Anyhow. Oh, actually, no. We only I only heard it for like four months because... Uh, Timba didn't like the bed after a while, so... I think it's cool. It's kind of adds that mysterious flavor to the news. Ooh, ah, ee, yeah. Yeah. Jennifer Waters is a reporter for uh, Market Watch from the Wall Street Journal, which is a part of uh, CBS. And she writes an article, Why are retailers ruining Thanksgiving? Basically, she's saying retailers have basically ruined every holiday, according to what some people have said. Marshall Cohen, chief industry analyst at NPD Group, retail research consultant, They have commercialized every single holiday by creating a good reason to promote something and drive traffic. They do it for the simple reason that, well, they can. Follows the adage from Field of Dreams that if you build it, they will come. If you open the store earlier, they will shop. And sure enough, they have. However, we've seen the creep into Thanksgiving Day grow more aggressive each year, but never getting this close to family time as it has this year. Stores going to be opening up at 6 p.m. Thanksgiving Eve. Or Thanksgiving Day. 6 p.m. Bill Tanser, general manager of Global Retail for Expertane, sees it as a confluence of sophisticated retailing and consumer boredom. Thanks to the swelling population of cyber deal surfers on Thanksgiving. Past decade um, has shown relentless consumers who turn to the internet for entertainment and holiday shopping on the holiday. So now retailers are saying, well, if they're shopping online on Thanksgiving, we should just open so they can shop with us. And of course, people say, okay, we'll go. All right, let's look at this for a second. People shopping online on Thanksgiving at home with their families. Not having to go to work to open up a store at 6 p.m. Thanksgiving Day, evening, whatever. And then be away from their families. What it sounds like to me is that these brick-and-mortar retailers, some of the big guys, of course. you got Target, you got Walmart. Who else is doing it? Um, Kohl's, I think, is doing it. Several different retail outlets, large ones, are doing this because they want to cut in on that pie, you know? This is why store hours are increasing. This is why stores are open on holidays, because they want to be just like online stores. Other stores named, okay, you got Sears, you got Target, Walmart, Kmart, at 2 Kmart. Kmart's from Michigan originally. It started in Troy, Michigan. One of the first Kmart's, I think, was Garden City. Same place, same city as the first Little Caesars. <laughs> uh, Kmart and Little Caesars, gotta love it. Anyway, uh, and The Gap and Toys R Us, all opening up Thanksgiving Day in the evening. Now, I don't know if it's stealing time from us since cons- since consumers basically are showing a strong interest in searching for those deals and making purchases on Thanksgiving. However, they're doing it online, folks. Online. This is the thing they were telling us about like years ago, that the internet and computers would change our lives, that we would never have to leave our homes. We could shop from the comfort of our living rooms. Just like me doing this podcast. I can do the podcast from the comfort of my ch- easy chair. Heck, I can do it in my underwear. Heck, I can do it naked. I'm not doing it naked, though, okay? Don't worry. Anyway, but, I mean, that's that convenience, okay? And that's that prerogative. We can shop at home if we want to on a holiday. There's no need for the stores to open. Let the online dealers have them for a day. Oh, my gosh. Online stores are getting money and we're not. Give me a break. First of all, Target, you can shop online with Target. You can shop online with Walmart. 